Part 5, the emission page. In the previous parts of this video, I've prepared a quick pre-feasibility study of a 10 megawatt photovoltaic project in Germany. Now I will look at Ratscreen's emission page. The emission page calculates the reductions in greenhouse gas emissions resulting from doing the proposed project and also calculates any revenues that might arise from this. The reductions are determined by calculating the emissions in the base case and the emissions in the proposed case and subtracting the two. Ratscreen considers GHG emissions during operations only and is not to be confused with a life cycle analysis. That is, the GHG emissions will not include manufacture, resource extraction, construction, or other associated activities. The emissions from the proposed case are for the most part obvious. For a photovoltaic system, there are no emissions during operations. Similarly, for a wind farm or a hydro plant, ignoring any methane emitted by a reservoir. For the reciprocating engine I looked at in the energy page, on the other hand, emissions would arise from combusting fuels like natural gas. But what is the base case for a grid-connected clean energy project? The alternative to doing the proposed project is to simply continue using the same sources of generation on the grid. So the emissions for the base case, which are called the baseline, are what the grid would emit to supply the electric output of the project were the project not built. Redscreen has three levels of analysis for the emission page, selected by the buttons at the left of the menu. They differ in how the baseline is specified. The parameters entered into one level are completely independent of those in the other levels on the emission page or any level settings on other pages. Only the currently selected level impacts the analysis. In level 1, the average emission factor for grid generation in the country is used as the baseline. The emission factor is in units of tons of carbon dioxide equivalent emitted per megawatt hour of electricity generated. Redscreen has a database of the grid emission factors reported by almost all countries in the world. In our analysis, this has been set to Germany. The analyst can choose to overwrite this emission factor, however. If I thought that Germany's emission factor was declining, I could overwrite the 0.477 tons of CO2 equivalent per megawatt hour estimate with say, a value of 0.4. Redscreen defaults to showing the average emission factor for all sources of generation on the grid. For many countries, Redscreen's database has emission factors by fuel type too. So, for example, if I thought that my PV output reduced the output of German natural gas-fired power plants only, I could select natural gas for the fuel type and the emission factor would change to 0.341 tons. Electricity is lost in the transmission and distribution system, that is, wires and transformers. Because these T&D losses for the baseline may differ from those for the proposed project, for a fair comparison, we need to find the emission factor per unit of electricity delivered. To find this, the user specifies the percentage of generation that is lost in the T&D system for the baseline and for the proposed case. 7% is a good starting point for a well-designed and maintained grid. Redscreen then assumes that in each case, the T&D losses need to be compensated for by additional grid generation. This raises the emission factor for the baseline, but also adds to the proposed case emission factor. It may initially seem a bit strange to see emissions for this PV project, but from the perspective of accounting for emissions, it is correct. Redscreen subtracts the proposed case emissions from the base case emissions to find the gross emissions reduction. It is around 3,500 tons of CO2 equivalent per year according to this analysis. The equivalence calculator allows us to conceive of this quantity of gas in terms of more easily visualized equivalents, like the number of liters of gasoline not consumed. So far, my proposed case employed exclusively solar energy, so the emissions during operation have been zero. If I return to the energy page and include a gas-fired reciprocating engine in our project, we see some major changes to both the base case and the proposed case. It is easy to understand why the proposed case emissions changed. In addition to biogas and landfill gas, we are combusting natural gas in this reciprocating engine and that will emit GHGs. 
but it is less evident why the base case emissions rose. There are two reasons for the increase in base case emissions. First, with the reciprocating engine plus the photovoltaic project, I am generating roughly 10 times more electricity than with the photovoltaic system alone. For 10 times as much generation, the grid will emit about 10 times more GHGs. But the base case emissions rise from 3,800 tons to 211,000 tons when I add the reciprocating engine. This is much greater than a factor of 10 increase. What explains this difference? The difference is caused by the landfill gas, which is largely methane. In the proposed case, the reciprocating engine consumes landfill gas. In the base case, I indicated that if a project is not done, the landfill gas will not be collected and will therefore find its way into the atmosphere. This will greatly increase emissions in the base case. If, in the base case, 90% of the landfill gas was captured and flared, the base case emissions would be much lower. But for now, I'll revert to looking at a proposed case consisting only of a photovoltaic project. At the bottom of the emission page, I can specify the amount, if any, the project will earn per ton of emissions reduction. Let's say I enter 20 euros. Other cells open so that I can specify how much this credit escalates each year, how many years it will be paid, and the percentage of the payment that will be lost in transaction fees. This might be the part of the credit kept by an aggregator. I'll assume 3% inflation over 20 years with a 10% transaction fee. RATSCREEN indicates that in the first year, the project receives revenues of around 63,000 euros for GHG emissions reductions. I'll next look at a level 2 analysis. Since the inputs in each level are independent of each other, when I open level 2, the GHG credit revenues that I just entered disappear. Fortunately, the menu includes a copy level 1 to 2 button that will bring them back. Level 2 and Level 3 analyses follow the same approach as Level 1, but instead of retrieving the baseline emissions factor from a database, it is calculated from a mix of fuels and generators that the analyst specifies. Let's say that I expected that for every megawatt hour of photovoltaic output, there would be a reduction of 700 kilowatt hours in the output of combined cycle gas generators, 200 kilowatt hours in the output of open cycle natural gas generators, and 100 kilowatt hours in the output of coal-fired power plants. I'd choose natural gas twice for the fuel type and coal once and enter percentages of 70%, 20%, and 10% for the fuel mix. I'd then change the generation efficiencies for natural gas from the default value of 45% to 55% for combined cycle and 35% for open cycle. Based on this description, RETSCREEN calculates an emission factor of 499 kilograms of CO2 equivalent per megawatt hour. Within level 2 or level 3, RETSCREEN allows a step change in the baseline once within the lifetime of the project. For example, if I expected the emission factor to decline by 10% in the medium term, I could click on the checkbox Baseline Changes During Project Lifetime, entered minus 10% for the change, and indicate that this happens in six years, and then give an explanation like decreased use of coal generation. At the bottom of the page, a table summarizes the emissions reductions and revenues for the first five years of the project and in years thereafter. A nice aspect of the level two or three analysis is that the sources of emissions in the base case and proposed case are shown, rather than hidden in a single factor as in level one. For example, if I add the reciprocating engine back into this project, the emission page shows the emitted landfill gas in the base case and the contribution of each of the different fuels in the proposed case. Level 3 differs from Level 2 only in that it allows the analyst full flexibility to specify the carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide emissions factors associated with combusting each fuel. Also, the analyst can override the IPCC global warming potential factors that convert methane and nitrous oxide to their equivalents in carbon dioxide. That is an overview of the emission page for grid-tied power projects. I'm going to use the level 2 analysis that I prepared here and turn to the finance and risk pages, 
which I'll look at in the next part of this video.